Hello everyone and welcome to lecture. In this lecture I want to go over some basic examples of uh, uh, some of the concepts that we talked about in the last lecture as well as some uh, selected applications. So some examples of propositional logic and selected applications. Um, the starting point I'm going to want to move back a little bit and uh, address something that is sometimes a little bit confusing to certain students. Um, the main idea is this is the definition of the implication statement. The definition of if P then Q. It is sometimes confusing. And with the logical equivalences that we touched on in the last lecture, um, it's made a lot, a lot easier to think of, um, and especially we'll go over some very specific examples. But you'll remember that if P and Q are two propositions, then the truth table looks like this. This can really be in any any order as long as you have all of the poss possibilities. In the statement if P then Q has the truth value true, false, true, true. And this is for two propositions, P and Q. And uh, what you want to recall is the logical, logical equivalence that we showed, which is that not P or Q takes on the exact same values as the statement if P then Q was defined to take on. So what this means is that the statement if proposition P then proposition Q is logically equivalent to the statement not P or Q. And this really helps us in understanding um, and interpreting um, given propositional if-then statements. For instance, if I'm uh, running for an election, say, I'm a politician, and I say, if I get elected, then I will lower taxes. All right, this statement is the same thing as the statement P arrow Q, where P is the proposition I get elected and Q is the proposition I will lower taxes. This is logically equivalent to not P or Q which is the statement I will not get elected or I will lower, 
I will lower taxes. This really explains the uh, the the reasoning behind uh, this the definition of the if then statement, um, and what we actually mean by the if then statement. It's why it's true. It evaluates it true in these two cases right here. Um, so this logical equivalence is very very important, and it shows us something very important. Uh, some very important insight into uh, what it is we're we're studying here. For uh, a more complicated example, we'll uh, kind of use a, an example from computer science, maybe computer access. And uh, this could be a, you know, a common problem uh, for university computer servers. Let's say you have a special research computer and uh, you want to express logically the statement, you can access the research computer from campus only if you are a grad student or a professor or an undergrad with special permission. And what we're going to do is kind of separate things out here into the various different propositions. And again, there are sometimes several ways of doing this, but any statement in the English language can be uh, separated like this. And what we'll do is we'll call a statement, or a proposition A, you can access the research computer campus we'll call proposition G you are a grad student and we'll call proposition P you are a professor Proposition U, you are an undergrad, and Proposition S, you have special permission.
So uh, the statement that we're interested in, in terms of our propositional logic, becomes the statement if A then P or Q or U and S which is the same thing as A right arrow P or Q or U and S where the parentheses are very important you have to respect parentheses um, uh, very, very very much so um, and we have a number of different important properties that come up as well um, that you'll see in the logical equivalences chapter. This is chapter 1.3 of our book. But uh, just like before, you can take this and rewrite this expression um, using uh, the, the various equivalences we've talked about. Uh, you can also um, come up with several different uh, logical equivalences that are going to be really important to us, uh, specifically the distribution and what to do with parentheses. The reason that parentheses are so important uh, in uh, given logical statements. And these are the following. So suppose we have three separate statements. P, Q, and R. Our propositions. Well, if you draw out um, the truth table for uh, the having three separate statements, P, Q, and R, you can talk about the statement P or Q and R. And um, I'll quickly draw this right here. So this is what the truth table looks like for having three separate statements, P, Q, and R, and then looking at the, the, the proposition P or Q and R. Well, it turns out that this statement, P or Q and R, is the exact same as the statement P or Q and P or R. And this is evidence we draw out the truth table for this statement, which I'll copy over right here. And you see that uh, the statement P or Q and R is the same as the statement P or Q and P or R. This is just one of the, the distribution uh, relationships that we have. Likewise, if you consider the statement P 
and Q or R. This is going to be the same thing as P and Q or P and R. And this is evidence when looking at the, the truth table that's generated by the corresponding statement. So the statement P and Q or R is logically equivalent to the statement P and Q or P and R. So these are uh, very, very important logical equivalences as well as the, the previous logical equivalences that we've talked about. And there are many others uh, as well. So you're going to want to study uh, the logical equivalences in chapter 1.3 uh, to get a really good handle on them and how to use them. But using these uh, and the other two that we talked about, you can rewrite statements like this uh, and many other uh, English statements um, to get uh, an idea of what they look like uh, as purely logical statements. And for the last explicit uh, English uh, example that we'll talk about is the following. Let's say, let's convert the statement, you cannot ride on a theme park ride. If you are under five feet tall, unless you are 18 years old. So to parse this statement, we'll see that R is the proposition that you can ride on the theme park ride. We'll call U the proposition you are under five feet tall. And O, the proposition, you are older than 18 years old. And so a compact way of writing this statement right here is to say you and not O. Right, if you and not O, then not R. which as a statement is, if you are under five feet and not older than 18, then you cannot ride.
the theme park ride. And using uh, the various rules of logic that we've talked about before, uh, this can be rewritten and um, made sense of uh, using all of the various logical equivalences that we've talked about before. And the last thing that I'm going to talk about in the lecture is going to be um, uh, an example, a very practical application uh, of uh, how we use uh, logical, uh, what are called logical circuits or uh, logic gates uh, in computer science. And we'll talk about other examples as we progress uh, throughout these, uh, the, the, these next couple lectures, specifically in the active learning activities. Um, but uh, I like this, uh, this example a lot because uh, it's very, very practically uh, you know, relevant to computer science and the basic building blocks of how a computer functions. And specifically what uh, I want to do is uh, review maybe a little bit of high school physics. Um, and uh, before we get into logic gates, I want to talk a little bit about what a circuit is. Um, so you'll recall that an electrical circuit consists of a battery that produces a current. due to a voltage difference. And um, uh, we have various uh, components that can go into electrical circuits. The most basic components being uh, a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. So the most basic type of circuit with uh, a resistor that you would study is a circuit with a battery, some resistor that creates a voltage drop, this is a uh, R circuit with resistance R. You can have a circuit with an inductor and we typically call the inductance I and lastly you could have a circuit with a capacitor in it. Now each of these uh, different objects from uh, electrical engineering um, and circuit design do different things and you know, come about uh, in different ways. Um, they serve different purposes but the idea is that uh, a general electrical circuit can be a very uh, extreme uh, combination uh, these three types of components, as well as many other types of components like diodes uh, and you know, other electrical components. The point being that um, for a given complicated circuit, you could have 
two resistors in parallel to one another. That then connect to maybe another resistor and then a capacitor, say, and an inductor. And uh, the current flow through such a circuit would be complicated, but um, it's possible using the theory of differential equations to figure out the uh, resulting current flow through the, the circuit uh, using what are called Kirchhoff's laws, uh, Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff's voltage laws and Kirchhoff's current laws. Um, and the reason that I'm, I'm doing this and talking about this is because uh, this is these are the primary components right, that build up um, uh, the inside of a computer and what, what uh, is this kind of running in the background of a computer and what uh, you can then do is um, use circuit components to create what are called logic gates where say you think of sending an input signal and an output signal um, and um, your input signal and let me just summarize this so you can use the circuit components to create logic gates. And this is the connection of what we just talked about. Uh, uh, the propositional logic to uh, actual physical construction um, and th these are um, devices that say given an input signal do something to that input signal uh, uh, that change it in a certain way um, specifically according to our propositional logic so uh, we can say negate an input signal or we can have two separate input signals go into uh, what's called an OR gate, which gives an output of the OR operation on those two signals. Um, or say we can have uh, two input signals uh, do the AND operation on the input signals and give us uh, the AND operation between those two input signals. And um, we have a notation in logic gates for these type of uh, components. Specifically, we say that an inverter is typically denoted like this. This is the not or negation operation, where we have an input signal of P and the output is going to be the negation of the input signal, or not P. The OR gate takes in two separate input signals. And just like you might expect, does the OR operation on those two input signals. given an input signal P and an input signal Q, the resulting output signal on an OR gate is P or Q. And this is the notation that we typically use for an OR gate. And the last most basic, um, it's just going to be the three most basic logic gates that we can construct using the um, 
the circuit components that we talked about before is the AND gate. This takes two input signals, P, Q, and outputs the uh, P and Q, the AND operation between those two input signals. And uh, the idea here is that now um, if we know how to physically construct these logic gates, which I won't be going over in this course, okay, that's a, a topic for another course, like circuit design, um, but uh, once you can physically construct uh, these logic gates, uh, then any logical proposition, um, <clears throat> you can eff effectively um, uh, uh, create uh, using these logic gates um, uh, in, in, uh, in actual hardware. Um, and this is uh, you know, a very, very, uh, very, very important application. Um, so for example, If we want to express the logical proposition for the three propositions P, Q, and R, P and not Q, or not R, it have three separate input propositions, P, Q, and R. And because um, we need a not Q and a not R, we need to, in our logic gate, put in a negation of Q and a negation of R. And then we also need to do P and not Q, uh, which means that we need an AND gate connecting P and the NOT Q because we have a NOT Q coming here and a NOT Q signal coming and NOT R signal coming here. And then this should be feeding down into uh, the same signal that the not R right here is feeding into. And it needs to feed it into uh, an OR gate. Because this signal right here is the signal P and not Q. This signal right here is the signal not R. And so uh, they both feed into an AND gate and you're left with the output of P and not Q or not R. And using the basic logical equivalences that we've talked about so far, you can actually see that certain um, logic gates or logical circuits are um, equivalent to one another uh, just using basic uh, logical equivalences. <coughs> and this is really the fundamental idea behind 
uh, how we, uh, one of the ideas how, uh, behind how we use Boolean logic, uh, even from the most basic standpoint in computing. Um, for instance, um, you know, we can define uh, the concept of a bit string. is a sequence of what are called bits. It's a sequence of ones and zeros that represent the truth or false value of a string of input propositions. For example, if P is some string of propositions, P1, P2, P3, P4, all the way up to Pn, each one of these propositions is either going to be true or false. Uh, and let's say P1 is true, P2 is false, P3 is true, P4 is true, all the way up to Pn, which we'll just say is false. And the bit string representing uh, this proposition P is going to be 1, 0, 1, 1, and then a corresponding zero or one value for any prop every and in, in all proposition in this bit string or the string of propositions um, for whether it's false or true. This the last one will be zero. So uh, you can very clearly see then that if I have um, multi multiple different bit strings that are carrying uh, information, uh, possibly about, um, if we go all the way back to the introductory lecture, uh, about a um, uh, given uh, mp4 or audio file. Um, uh, if we want to do something to that audio file uh, or to that bit string by uh, putting it through a logic gate, uh, we can see how that's going to change uh, the values in the, the bit string and actually you know, directly affect that information. Um, So let's just say, for example, that we have two length five bit strings, or I should say um, two propositions, P, which is P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, where P1 is true, P2 is false, P3 is true, P4 is true, and P5 is true. The bit string representing P would be one zero one 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 and if we have the bit string q which is a string of propositions q1 q2 q3 q4 and q5 takes on the value 
false, false, true, false, false, or true. This should be represented by the bit string. Zero, zero, one, zero, one. And so you can imagine um, putting this, these two bit strings through uh, either of the, any of these simple, uh, these two simple logic gates, uh, negation logic gate, um, or even uh, if you include a third bit string R, uh, a more complicated logic gate like this. Um, but we'll just do a simple, couple simple ones here. If you uh, consider uh, the bit string representing not P, or the negation of this first bit string right here, This is going to give you the bit string 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Or if you consider the bit, bit string represented by uh, P or Q, okay, P or Q is P1. or Q1, P2 or Q2, and so on and so forth, all the way up to P5 or Q5. So the bit string that represents P or Q is going to be 1 or 0, which is 1, 0 or 0, which is 0, 1 or 1, which is 1, 1 or 0, which is 1, and 1 or 1, which is also 1. And likewise, if you consider the bit string that you get from P and Q, you're going to end up getting 1 and 0, which is 0, 0 and 0, which is 0, 1 and 1, which is 1, 1 and 0, which is 0, and 1, and 1, which is 1. So uh, this is a very, very neat, neat idea. Right? This means that uh, any of our logical operations can be applied to uh, you know, a bit string of any, any length. Um, and this really forms the, 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 the basis of modern computing. It also forms the basis for what are called automated proving systems or automatic proof checkers, uh, which um, actually allow you to uh, go through and um, check the logical consistency of a proposed mathematical proof um, of uh, uh, a given uh, given in a given axiomatic system. So as we uh, kind of move further into uh, the, the the logical theory here we'll actually learn a little bit more about what an axiomatic system is and how to prove things uh, in a given axiomatic system. But um, I think this is uh, good enough for the, the, the lecture. And uh, I thank you very much for tuning in and hope you had a fantastic day.